Ask any Cape Tonian what the best thing about Feinbos is, and they are likely to tell you the smell. Feinbos smells sweet, yet fresh and herby. It smells like Cape Town, South Africa, the region to which it is endemic. To the untrained eye, these low shrubs may appear to be little more than weeds. But Feinbos is very, very special. This fire-prone plant community covers much of South Africa's Cape Floral Kingdom and is under severe threat from human encroachment and climate change. The Cape Floral it's Kingdom is the smallest of, the of six common. floral kingdoms in the world. Within the kingdom, more than 1,700 types of Feinbos plants are considered critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable. So um, the work we're doing today is pretty much looking at the Rivulins to Coast Corridor, which has been identified as one of uh, WWF's top priorities uh, for climate change corridor. It's got a whole lot of threatened species in it and at least two critically endangered vegetation types. Rupert Koopman, Ulrike Irlik and Andre Rousseau are conducting a habitat assessment of this piece of land. The land is part of a stewardship program aimed at convincing private landowners to participate in the conservation of the Cape's rich biodiversity. The program has received funding from the World Bank and spans nearly 2 million hectares of land, 23 local, national and global organizations and more than a decade of work. I've been working on the project now for about a year and I've got about four stewardship sites who are in the process of signing up. We've got Kanonkop straight ahead of us. Um, on this side, on the northern side of Kanonkop, is a stewardship site that we call Dussenberg. They're busy signing up a contract nature reserve. So the corridor is slowly forming. So those are two private landowners that are super keen on signing up. So much of the land in South Africa is privately owned. In the Cape region, about 80% of the biologically valuable land is in the hands of private farmers and landowners, they're not required to conserve the land. And that's where the government has an important role in providing technical assistance, in providing tax incentives uh, to encourage uh, voluntary stewardship of those lands. To date, 58 contracts have been signed with private landowners for conservation management. This has increased the area of endangered and critically endangered biodiversity under conservation by more than 300 percent. It's always been known that our protected areas are not adequate to cover the biodiversity that we should be covering in terms of protection. It's about implementing landscape scale um, conservation initiatives um, to strengthen uh, our biodiversity conservation activities and um, one of the ways that, uh, that that has happened is through looking at the expansion of protected areas. Mandy Barnett coordinates the work of conservation for the South African National Biodiversity Institute. We look at how we can get different actors from government to civil society to the private sector to cooperate with each other in the interests of biodiversity conservation, but not just biodiversity conservation, it's all about conservation with benefits for people because we're locating what we do in the economic and social development paradigm of South Africa. Being a developing country, we absolutely need to do that. The Cape Biodiversity Program has had good success with employment creation for local communities. Uh, with activities such as clearing of non-native vegetation, which is a big problem in the Cape region of South Africa. It's a major threat to the biodiversity and people have obtained considerable employment through that. Um, also through cultivation of native species for replanting, through small-scale ecotourism and other initiatives. And in this way, the CAPE program is helping with the socioeconomic development of South Africa in addition to conserving the biodiversity for future generations. Despite these social development gains, climate change is adversely impacting conservation work. Changes in weather patterns affect already fragile natural resources. The Biodiversity Project is working to lessen those impacts by boosting the resilience of South Africa's ecosystems, which reduces their vulnerability to the adverse effects of climate change. In return, strengthened natural resources like lush, healthy feinbos help to deal with the effects of climate change. In the face of uncertainty, with the future world that's affected by climate change. What we need to do is apply the precautionary approach and we need to make sure that we are putting in mechanisms so that we can adapt when 
whatever the future may be. And what makes sense for that is for us to protect our ecosystem services.